Okay, how totally awesome is this to be with people? This is the first in-person event that I've done in a really, really long time. It's so fantastic to be with all of you, our students, the great staff, and my colleagues on the faculty um, for a really, really special night. Um, and to do it out here and stop raining, and I don't want to jinx that. Um, but uh, it's been quite a remarkable year, uh, so challenging in so many ways. I know that um, some of you have had to deal with uh, particular challenges and particular tragedies in your life, and for that, uh, our collective hearts go out to all of you uh, as you contend with that and your families and for yourselves. Uh, but tonight is a night to celebrate. It's uh, uh, one of the great nights of, uh, of each Bowdoin year. Um, and this is the 25th annual Honors Day, which we're having at night, which we always have at night, at least we have in the time I've been here. Um, I want to thank the faculty who are here, uh, taking the time to be with uh, our students, uh, to be with one another, and to help our students celebrate their remarkable accomplishments. Uh, Honors Day focuses specifically on departmental uh, and program prizes, gives us a chance to celebrate those who have earned those honors, uh, and to do it in a very public way where we all get to enjoy and, uh, and take in the moment. Uh, as is true every year, not every uh, prize or, or award uh, will be presented tonight. Uh, there's still work to do for some, grades to come in for some, but uh, a good number of them will be uh, announced and uh, awarded this evening. Um, all of them will be published in the commencement, uh, on the commencement website, uh, and you'll be able to uh, see the rest uh, uh, there as well. This coming Wednesday, we'll have another in-person celebration. Uh, we will honor students uh, at a ceremony. Uh, for those that have been selected to receive awards uh, that recognize their leadership, their character, and their personal achievements. And we'll also celebrate the speakers who have the privilege of having been selected uh, as speakers at the commencement ceremony that'll take place two weeks from tomorrow on the 29th. Um, those award recipients, along with all of our students here tonight, uh, will um, be published in the Honors Day website. And I encourage you to visit that to see who's there, um, in addition to yourselves, for our students. Uh, at this time, it is my great pleasure to welcome my colleague, uh, Dean Jennifer Scanlon, to the stage. Good evening. Uh, I'm just so grateful to be here with all of you tonight. So first, it's my pleasure to introduce our first speaker tonight, Mariam Belkaid, Assistant Professor of Romance Languages and Literatures and recipient of the 2019 Sidney B. Karofsky Award for Junior Faculty. Professor Belkaid's research and teaching areas range from French literature and society to North African literature and culture, as well as film studies, pop culture, and crime fiction. Trained in both literature and political science at Paris Sorbonne University, the Paris Institute of Political Studies, and the new Sorbonne University, her most current research focuses on contemporary North African cinema and literature. Over the last decade, the region has known tremendous political, social, and cultural change, and Miriam shows how that is reflected in the works of North African writers, directors, and artists. Her work on the subject is culminating in the manuscript Oppositional Documentaries in North Africa, which is in progress. This semester, Professor Belkaid has taught contemporary France through the media and literature, power, and resistance. But this evening, Miriam has prepared to give us voice lessons. That's the name of her talk. Um, we don't have to actually engage, I don't think, in anything with our own voices. But please join me in welcoming Professor Miriam Belkaid.
President Rose, Dean Scanlon, esteemed colleagues, parents, friends, and especially the students we celebrate today, I'm very honored to have the opportunity to offer some brief remarks at Well Honors Day. When I started teaching more than 15 years ago, my parents, who were both teachers, gave me one bit of advice. Be careful with your voice. They meant that I should take care of my vocal cords, as they knew very well that one of the risks of the profession was to harm my voice, and even worse, to lose it. This past year and a half, I fondly remembered this advice when I heard myself several times literally screaming during my Zoom classes, as if my voice could travel more efficiently through the screen. Here again, a new challenge, teaching online, and here again, the vocal cords asked to do the heavy lifting and compensate for all that was lost. It was of course too much to ask of those fascinating muscles and listening to my parents, as everyone should, but never does, I once again tried to take care of my voice. One must take constant care of one's physical voice, the instrument, the throat, the vocal cords, but to what end? To find oneself, one's experience, one personal joy and suffering voiced into the world. A voice can be compromised and muted by different factors, patriarchy, systemic racism, discrimination, xenophobia, neocolonialism, such are the forces that may work to deprive you from your voice. Fear can also alter your voice. And I'm not speaking about stage fright that makes my voice tremble as you can hear it, but real fear. Fear for your safety and even fear for your life. Unfortunately, like many Algerians, I know this fear very well. I left my country when I was 18 years old, when a civil war started between Islamist groups and the Algerian military regime. I had the luxury to choose exile. I spent many years in France trying to cope with sadness, anger, and the guilt of abandoning my country to an authoritarian regime and a violent Islamist opposition. But I learned with time that the only way to overcome the fear is to speak out by peacefully protesting, going to political gatherings, by writing and publishing essays and opinions, by blogging, and more recently, by podcasting, by teaching also. And when I came to the US, I thought, and I was right, that it would be easier for me to give my voice to authors who are not always considered canonical, Algerian, Tunisian, and Moroccan writers and filmmakers whose names were unknown to many of my students whose names can seem hard to pronounce and even harder to remember. It's not always an easy task for Mohamed Dib, Asya Jabbar, Malik Haddad, and Maysa Bey to have to compete with names like Victor Hugo, Albert Camus, and Simone de Beauvoir. In order to overcome the pain and challenges of exile and estrangement, my teaching became more and more obsessed with silenced voices stories of trauma and loss, alternative narratives to the hegemonic ones that have structured our thoughts for way too long. By teaching all these authors, I share their voices and analyze with the students how they defend the, principle, the principles they stand by. We admire together how they speak to power rather than fear it. We learn also that a voice has much more strength when joined to others. Selfishly, this teaching allows me to keep my own voice alive, my Algerian voice. It makes me feel that I'm in some ways still useful to my country and my region, as I am constantly humbled and empowered by activists, journalists, intellectuals, who still live in North Africa and risk everything to fight for democracy and freedom. Allow me to say some of the names that might, not sound, that might not sound familiar to you, but whose voices 
were constantly on my mind last year. Khaled Dragni, a 20-year-old Algerian journalist, he spent 11 months in jail for doing his job. Mohamed Tajadit, 26 years old, activist and poet, currently in jail and awaiting trial. Amina Burawi, doctor and activist, sentenced for four years in prison for offending the precepts of Islam and endangering the unity of nation. Having spoken of protecting my voice, my throat, my physical instrument, and then finding my voice, my engaged public way in the world, I wish to end by lending my voice and offering you the lessons of another's voice. Walid Naqish is a 19 years old student. He was arrested on November 2019 for participating in anti-regime demonstration in Algeria. He was placed in pretrial detention for 14 months. 14 months. During his trial last February, he courageously revealed that he had been physically and verbally assaulted, tortured and raped during questioning carried out by elements of the Algerian security services. He was released and keeps going to peaceful protest every Tuesday and every Friday, despite the risks. In a world obsessed with denials, walls and borders that aim to separate us, I wanted to modestly lend this student my voice this evening in Brunswick, Maine, and to modestly honor him. I speak for him as many of you speak for silence groups in the United States, Colombia, Palestine, and many, and many other places. And nothing makes me prouder than seeing our students voice their concerns and political conviction. So please keep up the fight, speak up, and take care of your voice. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Belkaid clearly in exposing our students to the voices of many people who have been silenced. Um, we honor you tonight with this, um, because of the Karofsky Award, with also helping our students find their own voices. So thank you for all of that. It is my pleasure now to introduce our second speaker tonight, Theo Green, Assistant Professor of Sociology and recipient of the 2020 Sidney B. Karofsky Award for Junior Faculty. Prior to joining the faculty at Bowdoin in 2015, Professor Green received his AB in English and History from Georgetown University and went on to receive his MA and PhD in Sociology with a graduate certificate in Gender and Sexuality Studies from Northwestern University. This semester, Professor Green has taught Introduction to Sociology and a class dedicated to the sociological study of men and deconstructing masculinities. His research, teaching, and writing interests lie at the intersections of gender, sexuality, urbanism, and culture. His research broadly uses sexual communities to understand how urban redevelopment shapes and reconfigures how individuals conceptualize, identify to, and participate in local communities. Professor Green is the author of the book titled, Not in My Gayborhood, Gay Neighborhoods and the Rise of the Vicarious Citizen. Tonight, he will present our second Honors Day address titled, Knowing Your Place and Owning It. Please join me in welcoming Professor Theo Green. President Rose, Dean Scanlon, my esteemed colleagues, students and families near and far, and of course, our distinguished honorees. Although I intend on spending the next few minutes stringing words together in the hopes 
of conveying something of coherence. Words cannot express how truly honored and humbled I am to speak to you tonight as we celebrate the accomplishments of our students in a year unlike any other. Traditionally, these addresses offer an opportunity for a faculty member to engage their research and teaching in the exercise of offering words of inspiration to our young students, especially those who will be leading us to embark on new adventures. I study sexuality in place. And as much fun as I could have spending the next six minutes deriving lessons gleaned from observing gay bars, teaching about pornography, or from learning the 50 things you could do with a paperclip, gerbil, and a can of Crisco, I figured it might be better to explore the depths of my second love, the magical power of place and how we make sense of it. Although I've only recently discovered this love of place and placemaking, as I travel from city to city conducting my research, I'm often reminded of the words spoken to me as a child by my beloved grandmother. Growing up in Los Angeles, I possess the unique special quality that my grandmother referred to as a smart mouth. I had an answer and opinion for everything, and in a foolish betrayal to my often tender backside, the inability to keep those opinions to myself. And when I deigned to impose myself upon a group of adults in conversation to offer my unsolicited opinion, she would whip her head around, stare me down over her bifocals, and while wagging her long mahogany finger would often say, know your place, little boy. Children were meant to be seen and not heard. I always bristled at those comments. Whenever I heard them from anyone, I always felt that they were trying to humble me. They were a reminder of whatever I accomplished in life that I should never get above myself, that my place was limited, and I should remember precisely where I belonged. And hearing them, particularly from my grandmother, who always boasted of my achievements to others, made me particularly angry because I could not understand how the person whom I loved and cherished most in this world would make me feel so small, so insignificant. These days, as my work forces me to think about the meaning of place in the lives of the communities I study, I began to appreciate the, lef the lessons she left for me. Growing up as a black girl in Jim Crow, Mississippi, during the height of the Great Depression, my grandmother was constantly reminded that her place in the world was very small. Her father told her that he would prefer spending his money on new tires instead of shoes for her to go to school and finish her education. The white family she cooked for and cleaned for as a teenager would remind her that she was always a member of the family as long as she remained in the background. And even as times changed and her children and grandchildren had opportunities to live the lives as they chose, she also lived with the fear of what could happen when other people felt that a little black boy had stepped out of his place. To her, knowing your place meant the difference between life and death. Sadly, it is a fear that too many parents live with today. Parents like those of Trayvon Martin, Michael Brown, Tamir Rice, Nakia Bryant, Adam Toledo, and so many others who will never have the chance to break their place in this world. Too many parents must warn their children to know their place when they're confronted by the police or when someone, or when someone who tells them that they can't sit in a Starbucks, swim in a pool, barbecue in a public park, or even go bird watching because they don't fit someone else's perceptions of who belongs there. Too often, we allow other people to tell us where we belong that when we enter a room or space, we should sit still, keep our movements small, and be grateful that we're even invited. And yet, as I observe the powerful ways that people write themselves into spaces, I cannot help thinking about my grandmother. Despite the structural, political limitations of her world, she always made the most out of the spaces she inhabited. People always knew when she had been there. She instilled a space with kindness and generosity, bountability of spirit that always transformed the spaces where she lived, always empowering others to walk in their own light. So as I speak to you tonight, I revise my grandmother's admonishment to reflect the life she created and the impact she might not have known that she had. Know your place. 
It is more than a platitude for guiding you into a promising future. It is a call for each of you to recognize what you're doing right here and right now. The moment you step foot into any room, the moment you step foot onto this campus your first year, you've transformed it. What is Bowdoin without the people who lived out the routines of their everyday lives here? Sociologist Tom Jiren says it best when he defines space as what happens to place when a unique gathering of things, meanings, and values are sucked out. Place is not the backdrop or setting on which you perform the routines of your life, nor is it an inflexible entity that is imposed upon you. Place is the canvas on which you live your life. From winning a basketball tournament to sunning on the quad, Bowdoin exists and persists because you breathe life into it every day. You do it in the classrooms and the laboratories by energizing these spaces with your boundless curiosity and your brilliant ideas. You do it on the sports field, the sports courts, where you celebrate a victory or console each other in defeat. You do it in the music halls and the theaters where you fill the air with the beautiful sounds you create from your own instrument. The dining halls are not simply spaces to eat. You transform them into spaces of communion, where you share stories of the other spaces you've occupied and the ways you've transformed them. You bring your homes to Bowdoin when you decorate your dorm rooms. And in the last year, in the face of the pandemic, you have reminded us that Bowdoin is more than a stretch of land in Brunswick, as you have recreated Bowdoin in your bedrooms, kitchen tables, and your back patios. We are all placemakers. We're even making place tonight as we transform this field into a place of celebration for your academic achievements. Knowing your place means imbuing your practice with intentionality and confidence. More than acknowledging that you belong here, it means recognizing your transformative power through the simple acts of living your truth. You transform space simply by being here. Knowing your place means not accepting someone else's vision of what this place is or anyone, or any other place for that matter. Sometimes people have different, competing visions of place. It doesn't invalidate what you make of it. They all exist side by side. Knowing your place challenges the privileging of white, cis, heteronormative, ableist spaces. It allows you to break away from the tokenization that others box you into and reveal to others how you deserve to be seen. It transforms you into a true agent of change. It is acknowledging that you have a vision that can be shared with others, such as when a same-sex couple walks through the quad holding hands, or a person of color stands in front of a classroom, or a group of students have a conversation in Smith Union in their native language. You highlight the potential of what any space can be. But place is also always fleeting. Pretty soon, like Cinderella's dress and coat at the stroke of midnight, this place will revert into an empty field. And the place that we created here tonight will only live in our memories. Places change as people change. The traditions that marked your place here today will differ from those who came before you and those who follow you. But as long as you hold on to the memories you make here every day, the places you have created will never die, nor can anyone ever take them away. So no matter who you are or where you came from, always remember that you are Bowdoin. Bowdoin belongs to you, not as a collection of buildings and spaces, but rather as the places you create out of them. And because of that, this place is all the better for it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Green, for highlighting the impact our students have on this place and also for illustrating the profound impact that you have on our students and our classes and our classrooms. The Sidney B. Karofsky Award for junior faculty given by members of the Karofsky family is to be awarded annually by the Dean for Academic Affairs in consultation with the Appointments, Promotion, and Tenure Committee on the basis of student evaluations of teaching to an outstanding Bowdoin teacher who, quote,
best demonstrates the ability to impart knowledge, inspire enthusiasm, and stimulate intellectual curiosity. The prize is given to a member of the faculty who has taught at the college for at least two years. You just heard from the previous two winners of the Karofsky Prize, the Karofsky Award, and tonight I'm very pleased to announce that the 2021 recipient of the Sidney B. Karofsky Award for junior faculty is Cheryl Laird, the Marvin H. Green Jr. Assistant Professor of Government. Congratulations, Cheryl. <laughs> we will now begin the presentation of departmental prizes, beginning with Africana Studies. We ask that student recipients for each department come to the stage at the same time as the department's faculty presenter. And as you can see, we do this in alphabetical order. This prize was established in 1988 to mark the 20th anniversary of the Afro-American Studies Program by Jeffrey C. Norris, class of 1986, and his family's foundation, the Lennox Foundation. Today, the Africana Studies Department awards the prize in the form of books to honor a student exhibiting outstanding achievement in the field. It is my honor to award Lauren Dove with the 2021 Lennox Book Prize in Africana Studies in selecting Lauren, selecting you for the Lennox Prize, her teachers noted her insightful mind, her indomitable work ethic, and her intellectual generosity. Congratulations, Lauren. Hi, everyone. Good evening. Um, I have two prizes to award tonight. Um, for the first, the Engaged Anthropology Prize, we award it to Brooke Bajos. Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. This statement is as true today as it was um, when it was asserted by Margaret Mead, one of anthropology's best-known scholars. This prize honors anthropology majors and minors who integrate exemplary engagement in the discipline with community service, public education, and public scholarship. The prize recognizes uh, student efforts to bring attention to issues of broad significance, collaborate with diverse communities, and critically reflect on various dimensions of cultural life and intercultural interactions. Um, Brooke um, was awarded this prize um, based upon her efforts to work on issues of policy and support for senior citizens, especially in Maine. Congratulations. Uh, 
Um, the next prize is the Elbridge Sibley Anthropology Prize, and this is awarded to Alex Withers. So um, the prize established in 1989 in honor of Elbridge Sibley by Milton M. Gordon, class of 39, who was a student of Professor Sibley, is awarded each year to that member of the senior class majoring in sociology or anthropology who has the highest mid-year general scholastic average in his or her Bowdoin class. So this award, I think the way it's phrased is so um, tied to the GPA, but in many ways this award is meant, I think, to recognize students for their liberal arts education. And Alex is a really amazing example of this. He has a major in anthropology and economics with a minor in art history. And he is a joy to have in class. And he also did research in anthropology um, called Atypical Virtual Worlds, working with um, neuroatypical adults and their uh, social media and gaming activities. So um, congratulations, Alex. So on behalf of Art History, I am here to present a set of prizes, three different categories of prizes. The first of these is the Ann Bartlett Lewis Memorial Prize in Art History. This was established by the family of Ann Bartlett Lewis. It's given it for demonstrated excellence in art history. And this year it goes to Sabrina Lynn. Sabrina, I should say, is one of the most extraordinary seniors, uh, one of the most extraordinary students I've ever had in my time at Bowdoin by nearly 20 years. Um, but she shares that honor as well with a couple of other seniors that are up here as well. And we'll celebrate them all in a moment. Um, we also have with us um, the uh, winner of the, uh, one of the winners of the Junior Year Prize for Art History. Uh, and we will also be acknowledging the winners of the senior year prizes. And I'm gonna describe all of these together. These prizes established by a donor who wished to remain anonymous are given respectively to graduating seniors and to juniors who have achieved the highest distinction in the major in art history. So the first of these um, is the junior year prize. We are delivering that to Dalton Deer in absentia, Lily Poppin in absentia, and Lucy Siegel, who is here with us today. Um, and so, thank you, congratulations, Lucy. I'll just say briefly, um, for those of you who have enjoyed a Wednesday afternoon focus on the art objects uh, presentations through the museum, Lucy is very much uh, the, the source of many of these. So thank you so much for bringing some culture to our lives. So, and then finally, our two senior year prize winners, Margaret Grace Clipson, better known as Grace to me, and Brooke Rubel. Um, and again, uh, sharing a common theme with the museum and its very important role in our department's work and in the campus's cultural life, these two have been deeply involved in exhibitions, in classes taking place in the museum, and have done exemplary work along with Sabrina from the day that they arrived. They are just an astonishing, astonishing group. So congratulations, Grace and Brooke.
while these guys are coming up on stage, um, I gotta say this is weird, okay? Um, but really wonderful. Um, weird can be wonderful, right guys? All right. Um, all right, my name is Michael Colster. I'm here uh, representing visual arts. I'm gonna present these um, prizes right now. One of them is called the um, Ann Bartlett Lewis Memorial Prize in Visual Arts, and it's established by the family of Ann Bartlett Lewis. This prize is given for demonstrated excellence in creative visual arts. Um, in this case, we have three awards, uh, three award winners, um, Bianca Boyd, Sam Betts, and Audrey Grandpierre. Come on up and grab your stuff. All right, we'll do it this way. All right, all right. I know, this is weird person. <laughs> wow. Good to see you too. Uh, yeah, guys, I mean, we have them in class, but we get to meet for the first time on stage. All right. Um, I'm not sure if any of the artworks that we're celebrating that these guys created were made with Crisco or gerbils or uh, paper clips, but um, we uh, never can tell. Um, the next one is the Richard B. Martell Jr. Memorial Prize. Um, it's awarded to those students who, in the judgment of the visual arts faculty, are deemed to have produced the most creative, perceptive, proficient, and visually appealing artworks exhibited at the college during the academic year. We have two awardees uh, today, um, and that is Destiny Kearney and Kami uh, Am Amezgua. Is that close? My name is uh, Shu Qin. I'm on behalf of uh, Asian Studies and the Chinese Language Program. Asian Studies Prize is awarded to a member of the senior class majoring in Asian Studies who has attained an exceptional cumulative average in Asian Studies courses and undertake an uh, advanced independent study of honors projects in the major. And the prize goes to Juliet Halverson Taylor. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Chinese language prize awarded to a student with demonstrated motivation, commitment, to the study of Chinese language and the culture. The winner is Amanda Cassano. Congratulations. Hello, uh, my name is Hiro Aridobe. So uh, Japanese prize, language prize for this year, Rosemary Nguyen. Let me a little bit talk about her. Rosemary ha has been a constant and enthusiastic member of the Baldwin Japanese community over the last four years. As a first year student, she didn't get into the first year Japanese language class, but she came to me and told me how much she wanted to take Japanese, so I welcomed her. She maintained this uh, enthusiasm as an excellent student, thoughtful classmate, and participant of Oshietai, teaching Japanese uh, to elementary school kids. So this uh, year, she helped support the Japanese community by working as a learning assistant and acting as a wonderful mentor and model for new students in the program. Congratulations. And omedetou, so arigatou.
Okay, so I'm here representing the biochemistry program and I am absolutely delighted to uh, award three prizes this evening. Uh, the first is to Adedu Mola Adewale, for, who uh, is being awarded the John L. Howland Book Award in Biochemistry, which is given to a, a junior who has achieved academic and general excellence in the biochemistry program. I have known Adedu Mola since the first time she visited campus and showed up outside of my office knocking on my door saying, hey, do first years ever perform research here? Uh, and then by the time she was at her first day of campus, had joined my lab. Um, so I've worked with her for years, and I'm delighted um, to recognize her and her accomplishments. Um, and uh, most recently, she published her first peer-reviewed publication from my lab. Um, Next, I'd also like to recognize Onerika Onura, who also has been awarded the John L. Howland Book Award in Biochemistry. Um, I've also known Onerika since his first year when he took general chemistry with me, and he's really being recognized because of his profound love of thinking about molecular systems and biochemistry phenomenon. Um, he is has blown members of the biochemistry faculty away with his probing questions and observations. And I have a quote here from Bruce Cohorn, who says, Onedika has a humble and engaging demeanor that welcomes discussion. When he asks questions, he usually captivates everyone in the audience and opens up new areas of contemplation others have not yet thought about. I could not agree more. Okay, and last up is Andrew Mulholland, who's being awarded the Stephen Smith Prize in Biochemistry, which goes toward an outstanding senior who's majoring in biochemistry. Um, what I would say about Andrew, who is my current honors student, is he is intellectually on fire, and he exhibits a level of passion I have rarely witnessed. Um, from helping fellow students as a biochemistry learning assistant this semester, to guiding lab mates who are undertaking bioinformatics analyses, uh, to at all hours of the night analyzing and brainstorming about data related to his honors project, I can attest to his rare combination of enthusiasm and brilliance. And now my glasses won't be fogging up anymore for a few minutes, so that's great. So I'm Ann McBride, the chair of the biology department, and I'm thrilled to be here to present three uh, biology prizes to this spectacular set of students with two in absentia as well. So first of all, the Copeland Gross Biology Book Prize in honor of Manton Copeland and Alfred Otto Gross is presented to the graduated se graduating senior who has best exemplified the idea of a liberal education during the major program in biology. We have three outstanding senior awardees with deep engagement and accomplishments in diverse realms from the arts to biology and beyond. The first is Alexia Brown, a pianist who is completing an independent study in history on the American eugenics movement, as well as being a published author on research articles about human cancer metastasis and gene regulation in fruit flies. Second, 
Mindy Leader is a visual artist who is photo editor for The Orient and a dedicated researcher who can wrangle large data sets on a computer or prepare samples for genome sequencing at the bench. And Hannah Zukli is a dancer whose inquisitiveness about the natural world led her to sink her teeth into a research project on radula, which are minuscule snail teeth. So, Uh, second, the Donald and Harriet S. Maycomber Prize in Biology is awarded annually to one or more outstanding students in the Department of Biology. We have four outstanding senior awardees who have excelled in coursework in biology and demonstrated remarkable independence and rigor while completing honors projects in diverse biological disciplines in the face of a pandemic. So the first is Katie Galetta. Uh, who has studied egg-laying patterns of monarch butterflies on milkweed. Second is Molly Moore, who uh, has worked on understanding chromosome pairing in fruit flies. Hannah Randazzo has studied climate stress impact on sea star arm regeneration. And Annika Williams in, Ascent, in absentia has studied the seasonality of conifer forest photosynthesis. And I just want to point out that these descriptions pale in comparison to their actual work, so you should ask them more about that. And uh, finally, I have the James Malcolm Moulton Book Prize in Biology, which was established in honor of James Malcolm Moulton, which is awarded annually to an outstanding junior majoring in biology as judged by scholarship and interest. We have two outstanding junior awardees this year who display unquenchable curiosity for biology. They dig deeply into their classes and research with bountiful energy, showing independent thinking, deep engagement, and the ability to ask excellent questions. These are Thea Bell and Esther Wong in absentia. I've got quite a crew coming up. So I'm Beth Stemmler. I'm presenting on behalf of the chemistry department. And I'm really lucky to have an incredible group of students up here. Hope we have enough room. So I'm gonna start with um, four awards that are awarded through the um, American Chemical Society that recognize different disciplinary, disciplinary areas of chemistry. And the first goes to Eliana Roberts in analytical chemistry. <laughs> Emily Pan in inorganic chemistry. In organic chemistry, Alejandro Garcia, who is a graduating senior going on to pursue his PhD in organic chemistry at Michigan. I wanna give these all, these guys all a hug, but I'm trying to restrain myself here. Uh, in the area of physical chemistry, 
Gabby Vandendries, who is going on, a senior who's going on to pursue her PhD in physical chemistry at Minnesota. And finally, we have an award that um, comes from the, the main um, chapter of the American Chemical Society recognizing a Maine student, Rosemary Wynn. And I should say Rosemary is a, a senior biochemistry major who in addition to her talents in Japanese has other um, interests and pursuits in biochemistry and medicine. I next turn to the Philip um, Weston Meserve Prize in Chemistry which recognizes the excellent work and promise of a junior chemistry or biochemistry major. And this year we're recognizing Huang Luang in absentia Next, the William Campbell Root Award, which recognizes a senior chemistry or biochemistry major who has provided service and support to the chemistry department beyond the normal academic program. And this year, I'm really pleased to be recognizing Sean Sheen. And we have a group of first year student awards. Um, the first is the First Year Chemistry Achievement Award. And this is given to first year students for superior academic work in chemistry. We have two categories. The first is for general cat, um, chemistry, recognizing Isaac Bediaco. and Ayana Hatton in absentia. And for work in advanced chemistry, Oliver Wang. There we go. And uh, another collection of first year awards for um, laboratory work in chemistry, recognizing three students, Julissa Aguilare, Nina Hashimoto, and Rentz Kirchhoff in absentia. And I'm gonna end up with the Dana Walker Mayo Prize which is a prize that was created in the memory of Professor Dana Walker Mayo, who was a much beloved and influential member of the chemistry department for 54 years. The prize recognizes a senior who has demonstrated exceptional, exceptional motivation and potential for independent research in chemistry. And it honors Professor Mayo's defining role in our department and in the wider scientific community, and notably his promotion of undergraduate research in chemistry at Bowdoin. And I'm really thrilled to be recognizing two students this year, one in chemistry and one in biochemistry. And I'm gonna ask Chloe Renfro to stand forward first. So Chloe is a, a senior who for those of us who have had her in class, know that she excels in mathematics, inorganic chemistry, um, and computer science. And she has taken these interests and has been pursuing an honors research project this year with Professor Allison Zubak, where she has been exploring computational quantum methods to um, understand at a molecular level what's happening um, in the context of materials important for carbon capture. So Chloe um, is going on in next year to be um, pursuing her PhD in computational chemistry at Georgia Tech. And I'm incredibly pleased to be recognizing her with this award. <laughs> and 
And finally, I'm going to be recognizing a biochemistry major, Cameron Speller. Can you step forward? So Cameron is a student who I first got to know this year, but who my colleagues had you know, sung praises of because of his engagement in their classes. Cameron this year um, took on an honors project in my lab where he had to really step beyond um, material that he had learned about in his courses and took um, impressive ownership of his honors project. And in my, my lab group and in our, um, in things like department seminars, Cameron has impressed all of us with his curiosity and his probing and insightful questions. Cameron is next year um, going to be working in the drug discovery field as he has deferred his acceptance to the PhD program at UCSF in chemical biology. So congratulations, Cameron. One of the main jobs Bowdoin students have is to make each other smarter. The four wonderful cinema studies students we celebrate here tonight have done that with a variety of prize winning projects. I'm happy to say that working with these gifted students has made their faculty colleagues smarter too. Our first prize, the Rosebud Prize, is named for the iconic reference in the Orson Welles film Citizen Kane and is awarded to a member of the first year class for the best essay written for a cinema studies class. This year's Rosebud Prize goes to Xander Gilman in absentia, a first year who wrote a powerful essay on gentrification and systemic inequity in Spike Lee's Do the Right Thing. Xander explores the way in his words, gentrification creates irreversible damage and destruction to black communities. More than 30 years after its release, Xander explains, Lee's film remains both potent and significant. The Cinema Studies faculty is delighted to recognize Xander's accomplishment and looks forward to working with him in the years ahead. <laughs> then we have the Adventurer Prize, named for the pioneering female director Alice Guy Blaché's lost 1917 film, The Adventurer. This prize is awarded to a student for the best work of multimedia criticism for a cinema studies class or an independent study. And this year's Adventurer's, Adventurer Prize, the inaugural Adventurer Prize, goes to a junior who has made a beautiful video essay exploring how Vittorio De Sica uses animals in his classic films, Umberto Di and Miracle in Milan. Kate McKee knows about good cinema writing. Her latest brainchild is the Bowdoin Journal of Cinema, a peer-reviewed journal which collects the best student writing on the, in the field from around the country. It has just published its, its inaugural edition. We are very proud to honor Kate tonight. And we have the Sunrise Prize, named for F.W. Murnau's 1927 film, Sunrise, which is awarded to a member of the senior class for the best essay written for a cinema studies class or independent study. And we have two awardees this year. Alicia Echevarria, who wrote an ambitious essay on The Exorcist. This paper considers the historical moment when the film appeared. 
during the failed effort to ratify the Equal Rights Amendment. As Alicia argues, a whole genre of demonic possession films followed, gaining popularity, as she explains, at the expense of female agency during an era when women were intensely fighting for their autonomy. Her essay explores how these films, again in her words, reinforce and challenge perceptions of white femininity and purity. Just this week, Alicia depend, defended the brilliant honors thesis of which this work forms a part. We are so proud of her. And tonight we also recognize Max Hugel's marvelous essay on the Wendy Carlos soundtrack for A Clockwork Orange. Instead of doing a very short paper I had assigned my British film class, Max asked if he couldn't try something else. When I agreed, he developed a method for analyzing the musical cues in film, produced a wonderful interpretation of Kubrick's opening scene, and then volunteered to present this work to the whole class. In so doing, he modeled the best kind of intellectual curiosity and initiative. The cinema studies faculty members who judged this prize had no idea that Max had done all this, far exceeding my expectations for the assignment. Nor did they know he did so while finishing an innovative honors project in math. And I can tell you, I went to that defense and I didn't understand much of it, but he spoke so beautifully. <laughs> my colleagues just loved the essay he wrote. I am so proud and happy to have had the chance to work with Max at Bowdoin. Do I take those away or do you take them? I take them. You take them. I take them. <laughs> Thank you. Good evening. I'm Rob Soback from the Department of Classics, and I have here quite a crew. Um, I'm going to try not to start crying, but if I do, forgive me. So I'll beg your forgiveness in advance now. Um, so these, some of these prizes date back uh, to the 1870s, um, and they join a long list of illustrious Bowdoin alums uh, in receiving these. And one thing I want to note, especially um, the, the departmental prizes recognize student excellence, scholarship, accomplishment, um, but especially in the last year, um, as I've experienced class with these students, I want to recognize especially the grace and the kindness that they've shown to each other. And um, it's just been a, an amazing thing to watch. Um, and now, finally, I get to see them in person. And this is kind of like my knees are buckling because I've been seeing them on Zoom screens. And some of them for three semesters in a row that I've had the privilege and honor of teaching. Um, so they've kind of been with me and we've been with each other this whole time. So uh, without further ado, first the Nathan Gould Prize, uh, which was established by Abba Gould Wilson of Portland in memory, memory of her grandfather, Nathan Gould. And this prize is awarded annually to that member of the senior class who has, throughout his college course, attained the highest standing in both Greek and Latin. On behalf of the department, we are pleased to award this year's Gould Prize to Christian Lamontagne. Thank you. Drop you off to today. You. The Sewell Greek Prize was given by Jotham Bradbury Sewell, class of 1848, who is formerly the professor of Greek at Bowdoin. The prize is awarded annually to the member of the sophomore class who sustains the best examination in Greek. The department is pleased to award the Sewell Greek Prize to two equally deserving students, Sarah Karimi Munaru and Sujata Eden Tuari. Certificate for you, please. 
Sarah. The Sewell Latin Prize was given by Jotham Bradbury Sewell, class of 1848, again, formerly the professor of Greek at Bowdoin. And the prize is awarded annually to the member of the sophomore class who sustains the best examination in Latin. The department is pleased to award this year's Sewell Latin Prize to Augustine Manalili Seger. Hannibal Hamlin Emory Latin Prize was established by Persis E. Mason in honor of her uncle, Hannibal Hamlin Emory, class of 1874. The prize is awarded annually to the member of the junior or senior class for proficiency in Latin. The department is pleased to award this year's Emory Latin Prize to Jeffrey C. Price. And finally, we have three recipients of a relatively recent fellowship, which we established. Um, the Jasper Jacob Stahl Fellowship for the Study of Mediterranean Antiquity. Uh, the first recipient is Kate McKee, who will be spending this summer learning Latin. Um, so in addition to all your other accomplishments, um, she's also embarking on Latin. And we are thrilled uh, to be able to fund this um, summer study. Um, the second uh, winner, this is Matthew Seveliev, um, who will be spending this summer um, building on his three semesters of Greek um, and reading the New Testament in Greek over the summer. Uh, so quite an intensive and interesting course. So uh, Matthew, congratulations. Well done, sir. And finally, um, one final student, uh, Claire Rachel Roberts, uh, will be spending this summer um, using her um, stall funds to study intensive Greek, again, building on the first semester that she's already embarked upon. Um, she is unfortunately in absentia, um, but if she's watching, I don't know if there's a feed here. Well done, Claire. Oh my God, I haven't seen, I haven't seen this many people in person in a long time. <clears throat> okay, okay. There's no screen? Hi, I'm Stephen Majerslik, the chair of the computer science department. Um, and I have the honor to present two awards tonight. The first one is the uh, Computer Science Senior Year Prize. Uh, this prize is awarded to a senior or seniors judged by the Department of Computer Science to have achieved the highest distinction in a major program in computer science. Uh, this prize is being awarded to two students this year, uh, Jack Beckett Marshall in absentia. And, uh, and Kim Hancock. Um, I, I have had the the great, uh, well, I've had the good fortune, the, well, I've had the great good fortune of having uh, both of them in classes of mine, but colleagues of mine have had the even greater good fortune to work uh, with them on research projects. Uh, uh, Sean Barker had this to say about Jack. Beyond his formidable technical skills, Jack has a strong drive for research and intellectual exploration. He has worked on multiple different research projects in his time at Bowdoin, in his honors project, he is working on making computer programs faster and more energy efficient. So Jack, if you're watching. And Mohammed Irfan um, had this to say about Kim. Kim is an exemplary graduate of our liberal arts curriculum. 
She is an independent and critical thinker who loves to be challenged in both courses and research projects. Kim is graduating with a job offer from IBM's cybersecurity team, and she's also a Fulbright semifinalist. Uh, the second prize is the Alan B. Tucker Computer Science Research Prize awarded to a computer science student or students for excellence in summer research. And this year the prize is awarded to Laura Friel. Again, um, I've had the good fortune to have Laura in my classes and she's an, an incredible student. But once again, a colleague of mine has had the greater good fortune to work with her um, uh, on his research. Uh, Mohammed Irfan has said, Laura's research last summer on cascades and social networks was exceptional, and she has continued her work this year with great success. She is an amazing problem solver and bears a level of intellectual maturity that's rarely seen among undergraduate students. Congratulations, Laura. Masks and earrings. Good evening. I'm Professor Crystal Hall, Director of Digital and Computational Studies. I have the great pleasure of being here for the first time to award our book prizes to two students who were with us before we became a program on July 1st, 2020. We are recognizing tonight a graduating minor and coordinate major in DCS. We award the prize Excellence in Digital and Computational Studies to outstanding seniors who have demonstrated overall excellence in their DCS courses or in their service to the program beyond the academic program. Tonight, we're pleased to recognize Jason Park for his unanimously decided overall excellence in DCS. And for distinguished service to the academic program beyond his courses, we recognize Reed Brower. Is anyone else a little cold? Did we do some jumping jacks? <laughs> Good evening, everyone. I'm Emily Peterman from the Earth and Oceanographic Science Department, and it is my great honor to bestow four sets of prizes this evening. We're gonna start with our senior prizes. So this is the Earth and Oceanographic Senior Achie Academic Achievement Award. And this year, I'm thrilled on the verge of tears, to be giving this award to Caitlin Cox and to Belinda St. Louis. These awards are given to seniors majoring in EOS to recognize that their outstanding achievement in our curriculum, which may include their academic performance, their originality and creativity of thinking, their science communication, and their ability to integrate the Earth spheres and themes across our courses. Both of you embody courageous, original, creative thinking that inspires us. Congratulations. Linda is an absentia tonight. 
Our second prize uh, is the Earth and Oceanographic Science Biogeochemistry Award. This award is given annually to a student completing the biogeochemistry course, which is a key integrative experience in the US major. It recognizes outstanding performance in the course and the ability to connect biogeochemistry to the broader context of the Earth system. Both Ted and Anna, your uh, performance and contributions to this Keystone course were exceptional, and Phil and Catherine were thrilled with everything that you brought to this course. Congratulations, Ted and Anna. Our third set of awards are the Ocean, Earth and Oceanographic Science Book Awards. And these three prizes are given um, to one first or second year student from each of the introductory courses in our department. And it's their recognizing exceptional class performance, which may include collaborative ability, initiative, and creative contributions to the class. This year, all three of our book awardees are in absentia. They are Victoria Gravel, Natasha Haft, and Adele Metras. We celebrate all of your exceptional contributions to our courses this year, and we cannot wait to wrap our big polar bear arms around you into our classrooms this fall. All right, and the final set of prizes this evening are the Earth and Oceanographic Science Service to the Department Award. So this year we are honoring our three uh, co-captains or Captain and, okay, <laughs> they have a lot of special names that they've given to each other uh, to recognize their individual ways of celebrating. Um, and so this award is recognizing uh, EOS majors who, who have provided meaningful and impactful service to the Bowdoin College EOS community. This year in particular, we recognize the power and importance of community. And we appreciate all of your efforts to develop and deepen our sense of community and our relationships to each other. Thank you. This year, th this award is awarded to Zoe Dietrich, Z uh, Jarrett Scanici, and Alex Gates. I'm Eric Nelson, representing the Economics Department. We have two um, awards that we are giving out tonight. These are for our junior majors. Uh, we award uh, um, prizes to our senior majors during senior week. So the first prize is named after Adam Smith, the first economist. And this is the Adam Smith Book Prize. And it goes to John Hood, Isabel Crow, Griffin Ott, and Emily Statton in absentia. So come on up. Our second prize is actually named after Paul H. Douglas, who um, this prize recognizes juniors who have show a, a outstanding promise in scholarship and economics. He was the class of 1913, a respected labor economist and United States Senator, and is also the Douglas in the Cobb-Douglas production function, 
which I know some of you in the audience have struggled over, and many on watching have also struggled over. So these awards go to Michael Dean, Jack Shane, and Jenny Coe, and Rita Lynn, who are both in absentia. Good evening, I'm Chuck Dorn, Chair of the Education Department, and I'm delighted to be here with you this evening. Um, I have the opportunity to present this evening the Education Department Award for Interdisciplinary Scholarship. Um, and I have to say that uh, if, you, um, if you haven't had a chance to meet Mohammed Kalami uh, uh, over the past four years, you've missed one of the great opportunities that Bowdoin College has to offer. Um, the award is presented to the student whose interdisciplinary scholarship demonstrates exceptional purpose and passion in the study of education, and, and Mo's scholarship certainly does that. Um, but he is also, uh, I have to say, one of the most uh, generous and, and thoughtful and considerate students that I've ever had the opportunity to work with. Uh, and so congratulations, Mohammed. Um, I also have the opportunity this evening just to announce the, uh, the Bowdoin Teacher Scholars. Uh, the Bowdoin Teacher Scholars are a group of students who have completed the Bowdoin Teacher Scholars program, which qualifies them for secondary school uh, main teacher certification. Uh, and I have to tell you, if you think it's hard to learn how to teach, try doing it during the pandemic. Uh, what these students have accomplished over the past semester is a truly remarkable thing. Um, they can't be with us this evening because they've been in and out of schools, uh, if not teaching from other states uh, over the past 14 weeks. Uh, but they, um, they all defended their professional portfolios just today and, uh, and we're delighted to be able to welcome them to the profession. They are Andrew McGowan, class of 2019, Michael Walsh, class of 2019, Sarah Kaplan, class of 2020, Bridget Hoke, class of 2020, Jamaica White, class of 2020, Tia Hanna, class of 2021, and Brianna Moore, class of 2021. Congratulations to them as well. Team English, everyone. So it's good to see everyone. Uh, like a lot of you, I've taught half and uh, face to face, half Zoom, and uh, everyone's talking about how good it is to see everyone. About a week ago, one of these students, Zoe Wilson, uh, who's one of my Zoom students, said, I want to give you something for me on campus. I said, Sure. So she walked up to me uh, in front of Mass Hall, and then she started laughing, like laughing and laughing. And uh, I waited it out. She laughed for a long time. And finally, she said, I really thought you were going to be a lot taller. <laughs> and yet we're still giving her this award. Um, seriously, what a pleasure it is to be here and to, uh, and to be with these people. It's been one of the, the great pleasures of the last year or so, which has been hard. Anyways, um, uh, first, we have a bunch of awards and a bunch of awardees in absentia. So first off, the Academy of American Poets Colette Inez Poetry Prize. The winner is Lily Poppin in absentia. And uh, honorable mention goes to Ayana Harskowet. Uh, the Hawthorne Prize for the short story is Lily Tedford in absentia. The 
the Natalie Walker Llewellyn Poetry Prize is to Ayanna Harsquet. Uh, the nonfiction prize, we have two winners, uh, Charles Dart <laughs> and Spencer Wilkins. Uh, the Prey English prize, uh, we have again two winners. The first is Mitchell Jurasek, who's in absentia, and Liana, sorry, yes, go ahead. <laughs> and Liana Harrington. Uh, the Forbes Ricard Jr. Memorial, Memorial Poetry Prize, we have two winners. First is Margot Nyo. And the aforementioned Zoe Wilson. Uh, the uh, David Sewell Premium Prize is to Cynthia Lee in absentia. Uh, and this, uh, this student just defended her kick-ass honors thesis this afternoon, so I'm especially proud to say that the winner of the Mary B. Sinkinson Short Story Prize goes to Lily Fulham. <laughs> and finally, uh, in absentia, the Bertram Lewis Smith Jr. Prize goes to Cuban Kim. Hi everyone, I'm Connie Chang, Director of the Environmental Studies Program, and I'm really delighted to be able to present two awards. The first is the Academic Award in Environmental Studies that goes to a graduating senior who has achieved outstanding academic achievement in the completion of the Environmental Studies Coordinate Major. And this year the prize goes to Zachary Kaplan in absentia. Our second award is the Community Service Award in Environmental Studies, and this prize is awarded to a graduating senior majoring in Environmental Studies who has just demonstrated exemplary service to the college and the broader community. And this year's award goes to Ayana Harskowet. I just wanna say that Ayana is, has infectious energy and she has displayed passionate and inspiring commitment to diversity, equity, and environmental justice. So congratulations, Ayana. Hello everyone, I'm Shanila Kojamulji, representing the Gender, Sexuality, and Women's Studies program. I am delighted to present the Society of Bowdoin Women's Edith Lanson Kunsils Prize to two outstanding students in our program, Vanessa Apira and Grace Pettingill. Vanessa is a brilliant student who has brought critical insights to the classroom. She's conducted original research on a range of topics from erotic racism to sex work and beauty standards always with an eye to transnational and diasporic articulations of blackness. Grace's curiosity knows no bounds. Her most recent research project conceptualizes motherhood, and it is a dazzling study of the intersections of class, race, and gender in the US. Both Vanessa and Grace have also been generous ambassadors of the GSWS program on our campus, and we wish them all the best in their future endeavors. Congratulations.
Good evening. Uh, my name is Birgit Tautz, and I'm the chair of the German department. It's a great pleasure, first of all, to see these four with me on stage. Um, I've taught all of you at one point in your career, early on and later on in the case of Ellie. And Gabby is the one I met first before she was a student at Bowdoin when she pretty persistently called me several times when she tried to get into Bowdoin, but then she worked as a teaching assistant with me. So it's a great pleasure to see all of you. And German gives two prizes. The first one is the German Consular Prize in Literary Interpretation. It was initiated by the German consulate from whom the winner receives a certificate of merit and a book prize. In addition to a small financial prize to be awarded from the income of the fund. So Eddie, I hope that the German government is not bankrupt yet. <laughs> the prize is awarded annually to a senior German major who wins a competition requiring superior skills in literary interpretation. And it's always a special pleasure if this prize goes to somebody who started the, germ, the study of German with us. The, third, the second prize um, always is awarded to three people who really came to the study of German at Bowdoin with a different background and different preparation and or who benefited from study abroad. And Tor was one of the uh, few lucky ones who actually managed to spend a semester of her junior year abroad, as did Gabby. So the Old Broad Bay Prize in Reading German goes to Tor Parker, Lowell Rock, and Gabby Unipan. And it was established by Jasper J. Stahl, who has, um, funded uh, several lectures at the uh, lecture, has established several lecture funds at the college to um, support the study of German and European um, literature. And this prize in particular was established to honor um, Germans who arrived in Broad Bay, what is today Waldeboro, who were enticed to come to Maine by a fraudulent pastor. So we hope we didn't entice you with fraudulent promises. We are very proud of you and we celebrate you today. Congratulations. Delighted to be here this evening on behalf of the Department of Government and Legal Studies to present several awards this evening. I do want to abuse my chance at the microphone to uh, give a special shout out to my departmental colleague and friend, Cheryl Laird, uh, for her award this evening. <laughs> we are very proud of what you've achieved already and, uh, and proud of everything you will do as your star continues to rise. Uh, our prizes this evening uh, are in two parts. Uh, the first is our, our subfield prize, which is given in four areas of political science, awarded annually to senior majors who demonstrate exceptional performance at Bowdoin. Uh, the first, in American politics, uh, is given to Henry Schlick. He is in absentia, so I will say only that he is wicked smart. Uh, our other awardees, however, are here. Uh, 
Our prize in comparative politics goes to Alex Baselga Gariga. Alex's excellence in comparative politics is informed by a deep love of history and a sharp analysis of patterns in contemporary politics. He's demonstrated remarkable perseverance and frankly quite amazing resilience this year in pursuing his honors project, which examines political parties in his home region of Catalonia and Spain more broadly. Alex? Our prize in international relations goes to Noelia Calcano Silvestre. Noelia is finishing up an honors project bridging immigration policy, climate change, and U.S. Latin America relations. It could not be more timely and demonstrates deep commitment both to social service and intellectual curiosity, uh, confirmed by her service as a Bowdoin Public Service Fellow. She served as an intern for Representative Jared Golden and was just awarded a Fulbright. Noelia, congratulations. We have two prizes in political theory, because all political theorists are special. Uh, first, to Molly Eisner, and these two really are very special. Uh, Molly uh, began her political theory career in Professor Paul Franco's seminar, Human Being and Citizen. Uh, in fulfilling the essence of a liberal arts education, she has come full circle and concludes her career with an honors project on the educational philosophies of Jean-Jacques Rousseau and Mary Wollstonecraft, entitled Making Human Beings and Citizens. Molly, congratulations. <laughs> And our other prize in political theory goes to Lorenzo Meggs. Lorenzo, in what may be the clinical definition of insanity, has taken every single political theory class offered during his time at Bowdoin. He's excelled in all of them, all the while maintaining, according to Professor Yarborough, his California cool persona. <laughs> He's been a joy to have here. Lorenzo. <laughs> And lastly, uh, the Richard E. Morgan Prize for Excellence in the Study of the Constitution, which is awarded annually to a student excelling in the study of constitutional law. Some of my colleagues will recall, of course, Dick Morgan, a uh, member of Bowdoin's class of 1959. Uh, he returned to Bowdoin's faculty in 1969 and served for here for 45 years as a leading scholar of the Constitution and the First Amendment uh, before his untimely death in November 2014. Uh, this prize then is given by the department in his memory and his honor. Uh, the winner this year is uh, Francis O'Keefe, or Mackey. Uh, Mackey has been a diligent student of the Constitution. He's focused on the myriad ways it's interpreted by the U.S. Supreme Court. And in addition to excelling in constitutional law courses, he's also completed two independent research projects exploring constitutional decision making. Uh, first, a summer research fellowship analyzing originalist doctrine and then a senior honors thesis to be defended next week that investigates whether presidential campaign rhetoric impacts Supreme Court opinions. Mackey, congratulations. Hello, I'm David Hecht from the Department of History. Um, and I have to say that I will be meeting both of these students for the first time in about 30 seconds. Um, so, but it's always nice to be able to meet someone for the first time by giving them an award. So, um, and these two, um, but my colleagues do sing your praises. So, um, the, and the, I should also say that these are two awards that history awards are um, both relatively new and I may be mistaken, but I think these are the first time they'll be given out in person. So the first is the Dr. Samuel and Rose Bernstein Prize for Excellence in the Study of History. In honor of the historian of Europe and revolutionary social movement, Samuel Bernstein and Rose Bernstein. 
in un given to an undeclared history student who, in the collective judgment of members of the history department, has demonstrated exceptional promise in history class. And this year goes to Hafsa Hossein. And the second prize is the Phyllis Marshall Watson History Prize, given to a Bowdoin undergraduate who, in the collective judgment of members of the history department, has the best student paper on subjects related to the American Civil War era or on war-related themes in modern history. This year going to Eliza Jevon. Thank you. Earrings, you know, earrings. And can you believe that I did not put on lipstick? <laughs> I forgot that I was going to remove this. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I'm Nadia Celis. I'm here on behalf of the program of Latin American, Caribbean, and Latinx Studies. It is my very, very honor um, to award these two wonderful people next to me. <laughs> and I'm going to get emotional, so I'm just warning you. Um, so we are um, presenting two prizes. The first of them is going to be the Latin American Studies Award for Public Engagement. And we are, we are giving this honor this year to Arane Guyen. Um, the program of Latin American, Caribbean, and Latin American Studies is pleased to reward Arane with the Public Engagement Prize he has contributed greatly to the recognition and understanding of Latin America and Latinx communities through exemplary public engagement and community service, intersecting with his course work in LACLAS. Among his many endeavors, Arain helped form Bowdoin's Define American chapter, the only student group on campus that focuses on educating the community on immigration issues and advocating for the undocumented student population on the Bowdoin campus. Arane also spent several su summers working in Tijuana with migrants and deportees, a work that um, grounded his research project on the contemporary immigration system in the, in the United States. We are thrilled to honor Arane's passion for immigration studies and his activism on behalf of migrants at Bowdoin and beyond. Cannot wait to see what is next for you, Arane. And here's the part where I get sentimental. So Norel, <laughs> Norel Sherman is receiving the John Harold Turner Prize in Latin American Studies, awarded to a graduating Latin American Studies major who has achieved academic distinction and has contributed to an understanding of the region. From her outstanding academic achievements in the 15 courses that she took in our program, to her outreach to local communities, Norel has shown an extraordinary devotion to the culture and history of Latin America. At one of her more recent initiatives, Norel collaborated in the Multilingual Mainers program, supporting Brunswick Elementary Schools to diversify their library offerings in Spanish uh, with a McKean Center Fellowship. I was honored to accompany Norel through her research and writing of her groundbreaking thesis on the contributions of Latin American women artists um, on denouncing and healing through performance violence against women in the Americas and beyond. And I have to confess to everyone, to Norel even, that about in the, at the beginning of last fall, I did something I had never done before. I praised to Norel um, the incredible benefits of taking an independent study without the pressure of writing a thesis. I basically tried to persuade her to not do a thesis. She didn't even notice. And I'm so glad. I had never been so glad for a student not having listened to me. <laughs> because basically for the last year, 
I have learned so much from Norel. Everything that she has brought to the table has been incredible. And I'm talking about artists that honestly are brutal in the way that they, they depict violence and has taken a lot of courage to endure the pain of going through that. So she would make sense of why they did this. So Norel, I'm so proud of every one of those 100 pages that you wrote. I'm your professor, and I have had so much fun just seeing you thinking and just flying with your passion and your mind. Um, so I am so happy to honor you today. And Norel and I vaccinated the same day, so I'm going to hug her. Hello, I'm Jennifer Tabak, representing the math department, and I'm thrilled to be awarding these prizes tonight because I have taught all eight of the students who are getting the math department prizes this year. And I'm really grateful that they were on this crazy Zoom journey with me, and I know how much they've learned and how hard they've worked. And it's good to see them in person. So, <laughs> um, Our first prize is the Edward Sanford Hammond Mathematics Prize and it is awarded to a graduating senior who is completing a major in mathematics with distinction. This book prize honors the memory of Edward S. Hammond, for many years the wing professor of mathematics and was established by his former students at the time of his retirement. So this is awarded tonight to Connor William Fitch. And our second awardee of the Hammond Prize tonight is Ploy Watana Wanichakun. Our second prize tonight is the Smythe Mathematical Prize. This prize was established by Henry Jewett Ferber of the class of 1861 and named by him in honor of Professor William Smythe. It is given to that student or students in each sophomore class who has demonstrated exceptional performance in mathematics coursework and dedication to the subject. It has a small monetary award, which in 1861 was one um, semester's worth of tuition and now <laughs> would probably buy about half of a textbook. So. <laughs> so <laughs> um, it's awarded in the sophomore year and every year afterwards. So I'll read the list of names and then we can honor our Smythe Prizes. So the first one is Arav Agarwal in absentia, Sarah Elizabeth Clark, John Rogers Hood, Jenny Wang in absentia, and Ploy Watana Wanichakun. And now we can thank them. And our final prize is the most fun one to say. It is the 100 pi minus epsilon prize. <laughs> and it is a monetary award in the amount of $314.15. <laughs> it is awarded at the discretion of the Department of Mathematics to a first or second year student demonstrating exception exceptional inspiration and joy for the pursuit of mathematics. And I can honestly say for the two people who are, will receive this tonight, they completely deserve this prize. So the first one is Luis Fernando Cano Vasquez, and the second is Connor Mars.
Good evening. Uh, I'm Vincente. I'm representing the music department. Uh, and the first prize we will be awarding is the Sue Winchell Burnett Music Prize, which is established in memory of Sue Winchell Burnett and is awarded to the member of the senior class who has majored in music and has made the most significant contribution to music while a student at Bowdoin. And this year's recipient is Coleman Brockmar. Coleman's musical interests and contributions have been wide ranging and varied. He's been a stalwart member of the concert band and the orchestra and has also played trumpet and keyboards in many non-department groups. He's kind of a have trumpet will hire, um, or have trumpet will travel uh, uh, guy. Um, and he's composed many pieces and he is currently finishing up a, for his honors project, a fascinating app that analyzes musical artists' pre-existing songs uh, and then to, fi to find their musical fingerprint and then allows people to combine different artists' musical fingerprints together so that one might write a song that, for example, sounds like a cross between Stevie Wonder and Billie Eilish. Um, so, Coleman. The Mary Hunter Prize uh, recognizes student achievement in writing about music in a social historical context. And the prize is given in recognition of uh, uh, Leroy Greeson, professor of music, Emerita Mary Hunter, who some of you probably remember, uh, for her lasting contributions to music research, education, and leadership at Bowdoin College. And this year's prize goes to Emily Ha. Emily is not only a wonderful and evocative writer about music, but she is also a wonderful performer of music as well. A wonderful singer, a key member of the chamber choir, and is blessed with so much determination and perseverance that she was able to complete an honors project in choral conducting, in which she conducted an actual choir while still adhering to Bowdoin's strict COVID policies. So, Emily. very vaccinated, she assured me. Okay, great. Um, finally, the Elliot Schwartz Award, which is created in recognition of his distinguished comp compositional career and 50 year tenure as faculty member in the Bowdoin College Department of Music. The Elliot S. Schwartz Award is given to the student who has written the most compelling music composition during that academic year. Uh, and this year's recipient is Samantha Pollock. Sam has written several piece, several wonderful pieces during the course of her time here at Bowdoin, including one that was picked up by the world-renowned Cassatt String Quartet and performed multiple times in concerts. Sam is currently finishing up an honors project in which she is uh, writing a suite of pieces for electric guitar. And these pieces not only expand the timbral capabilities and techniques on the instrument, but also beautifully intertwine them with uh, extra musical concerns such as physical and mental health, uh, gender and sexuality. And so in absentia, that's being awarded to Sam Pollock. So, Sam. Thank you. Okay, well, it is my honor to kick off awarding the Sumner Increase Kimball Prize to Zoe Dietrich. This is being, um, well, this prize is awarded annually um, to a member of the senior class who's shown the most ability and originality in the fields of the natural sciences. Receiving the Kimball Prize is one of Bowdoin's highest honors for a student. The, this award requires a nomination letter written by the department that provides evidence of creativity, significant intellectual contributions to a sustained research project, and demonstrated excellence in breadth and depth of work in the natural sciences. Zoe embodies these criteria as demonstrated by the independent nominations from both EOS and biochemistry. 
The ways in which she embodies excellence are too numerous to count, so Emily and I will provide a couple of illustrative examples. The breadth of her scientific exploration and accomplishment, from the molecular scale of biochemistry to the global scales of Earth system science, is both unique and inspiring. She's investigated the virulence of Candida albicans, a common human fungal pathogen, with Professor Anne McBride. She's examined how microbial communities mediate nutrient cycling in West Florida blue holes, which are these spectacular, understudied, subsurface caverns. And she's evaluated the factors that control greenhouse gas emissions from coastal salt marshes here in Midcoast, Maine. And all of this is preceding her exceptional honors thesis work in which she's been developing a new modeling approach to understand and quantify the complex, and I do mean complex, pathways by which bacteria process nitrogen. Her work has critical implications for how we can understand and then mitigate nutrient pollution in river and estuary ecosystems. These are masters and PhD caliber, caliber level research projects. And she does all of this while also serving as co-captain of the EOS student group and while maintaining deep connections with family and friends across the globe. She's won numerous awards at every stage of her career, including the Noah Hollings Fellowship, a Goldwater Scholarship, scholarship and the Churchill Scholarship. I was just going to wrap up to say that Zoe's going to undertake her fellowship at Cambridge next year, the Churchill, where she'll explore methane emissions by studying sedimentary samples. And um, in essence, Zoe is all in all the time. It is an absolute honor to recognize her with this award. I'm, I'm Patsy Dickinson, I'm the director of the neuroscience program, and I'm honored to get to present the Mono Neuroscience Prize to four students this year. The Mono Prize was established by David Mono, who graduated in 1999, and is awarded for excellence in, re excellence in research by a student majoring in neuroscience, or students. And this year we're sharing this with four, by four excellent neuroscience honor students, they all had planned and proposed really interesting lab projects that were supposed to be um, done last year, and they were awarded fellowships to conduct these starting last summer, that is to say the summer of 2020. Um, and as you can imagine, they did not do those. They all were forced to switch to remote projects, to completely alter their projects, and to generate new projects that they actually conducted this year. Um, they all did this with grace, goodwill, a lot of work, and a lot of intellectual input. And as a result, they all finished really remarkable and excellent pieces of research this year. And so I'm pleased to present the Mono Project to Audrey Jordan. Um, to Emily King. To Brandon Lee. And to Andrew Moore. Awesome students all. Thank you.
It's my debut on the sports field. <laughs> Maybe the same for many of my fellow nerds, but nobody wanted to admit it. I'm Madeleine Massal from the physics department. I'm really excited to be here to celebrate all this marvelous student achievement and to hear the wise words from my colleagues. Our first prize that we're going to award from the physics department is the Edward, Edwin Herbert Hall Prize in Physics to an outstanding sophomore scholar. And this year, the prize is going to Angela McKenzie, who will bear the double burden of being given a book that no one recommends that she reads <laughs> by Hall himself about his <laughs> theories of education. And she'll also have to explain to everyone what it is that Hall did as one of Bowdoin's most famous science alum who showed that Benjamin Franklin was wrong about the sign of the charge of the electron. Maybe she'll go further and she will uh, try and convince the campus that this is a more famous graduate of Bowdoin than Hawthorne or Longfellow, and we should have a building named after him. <laughs> Thank you very much. Angela's worked with me this semester on a course where we teach the Hall Effect, but I've never met her before, so that's also a great pleasure. The next prize on my list is the Noel C. Little Prize in Experimental Physics. As many people know, the, the experimental uh, efforts this year have been curtailed somewhat, but we were still very happy to identify Elijah Berger as a candidate for this prize because he's done amazing work working with electronics remotely uh, and building great, interesting systems under conditions that normally would make people say, maybe this isn't a great year to do experiments, but he's done wonderful work. My colleagues were very happy to nominate him and to recognize uh, his experimental work and his overall excellence in the department. Yeah. <laughs> Have to find the right envelope. <laughs> The next prize is the E.O. LaCase Jr. Prize in Theoretical Physics. This one, the department almost came to fisticuffs. There were three very excellent honors projects in theoretical astrophysics this semester from the department. Each uh, student demonstrated excellence in a thesis that wowed us and impressed us, but um, trying to judge between them, this is the first time we've given a triple prize but I'm really happy to be able to celebrate the achievements of Maria Perez Mendoza, Chloe Richards, and David Joe. People shouldn't get more than one prize. It just makes it confusing. But we have another category. In addition to all their wonderful scholarship, many of our students in the physics department take the time to become learning assistants to help other students in the introductory courses really appreciate the excitement of physics and to feel confident in their courses. And those students who work really hard in the LA program make a huge difference in the community feeling in the department. And so again, we're recognizing three people who've uh, made great contributions to that program, one of whom got her prize at the wrong time, but now gets this another one. Um, so both Maria Perez Mendoza and David Ju are being recognized twice. And then also Rain Rayner, who has brought uh, wonderful uh, contributions of uh, bringing community and supporting faculty teaching all of them to the LA program. So I'm happy to recognize those three.
and Braden wasn't able to be here, so we should recognize her in absentia, but also congratulations to all our wonderful students. On behalf of my colleagues in religion, I want to recognize the Edgar Oaks Acorn Prize. The fund of this um, was established by Edgar a Oaks Acorn, 18, class of 1881, and awarded as a prize for the best essay written by a member of the second or first year classes in religion 1101. The recipient of the Acorn Prize this year is Leah Cornmel, Class of 2023 in absentia. Good evening, everybody. I hope the rain holds off. Um, I am Catherine Doge Roth, and I have the honor tonight of presenting the Romance Languages and Literatures Prize for Excellence. And I'll wait till everybody gets up here. So I have the honor of presenting the, the Prize for Excellence in Romance Languages and Literatures, which is awarded to a graduating Romance Languages major for outstanding achievement and promise in the study of more than one romance language, literature, and culture. And I'm thrilled to say that um, tonight this award goes to a wonderful student, Arjun Mehta. Throughout his work in both Francophone studies and Hispanic studies, as well as his time in Yaoundé, Cameroon, and Cat Salamanca, Spain, Arjun has shown extraordinary intellectual and cultural curiosity, terrific generosity, and an amazing zest for deep learning, both within and without, outside of the classroom in the wider world. Um, he just um, does everything he does, he does it with gusto. So, felicitations, Arjun. <laughs> now for some Francophone Studies prizes. The Charles H. Livingston Honors Prize in Francophone Studies was established by former students and friends of Charles Harold Livingston, Longfellow Professor of Romance Languages, and it is awarded to encourage independent scholarship in the form of an honors thesis in Francophone Studies. We in Francophone Studies are thrilled to award this year's prize to a truly remarkable student, Anna Bosari. Anna has brought her keen insights, terrific capacity for close analysis, and her generous intellectual spirit to our program. Anna has just completed a stellar honors thesis on the emergence of women's voices in the work of Algerian author Marisa Bey with my colleague Mariam Belkaid. Felicitations, Anna. Goodwin Francophone Studies Prize was established by the Reverend Daniel Rains Goodwin, class of 1832, and is awarded to the best scholar in French, or shall I say, Francophone Studies. We are thrilled to award this prize tonight to two brilliant seniors who have shared their extraordinary gift for literary and cultural analysis and been just an absolute joy to have in our courses, Jamil Gutzman and Anna Bosari.
finally, the Eaton Leith Francophone Studies Prize was established uh, in honor of Eaton Leith, a professor of Romance Languages. This prize is awarded to the member of the sophomore or junior class who by proficiency and scholarship achieves outstanding results in the study of French literature. This uh, prize goes to Roshan D'Angelo Christopher and Emmeline Breland Flagg in absentia. I'm meeting Roshan for the first time. Um, both Emmy and Roshan are fantastic students with unusual gifts for literary and cultural analysis. Um, both of them were had their study away uh, year cut uh, cut off by COVID, or um, uh, but Roshan is actually going to be going to France next year and spending his senior year there instead. So we're very excited for him, and we're happy to have Emmy back with us in the fall. Thank you. I feel like I have new insight into the television show Friday Night Lights, finally. <laughs> <laughs> this is what it's like. Um, I'm Allison Cooper, and I'm here this evening to represent Italian Studies and to uh, give out two prizes for our fantastic students in Italian Studies. The first prize is the Dante Prize, which was established in 2010 by the generous donation of Zachariah Massey, class of 1990, and it is awarded to the student, or in this case, students, who write the best essays on Dante or Italian literature. Um, this year, my colleague Ariel Saber could not be with us here tonight, because she's not part of the testing program, but uh, she was happy to convey to me that both um, the three students, all three of these students, are exceptionally gifted writers and analysts, analysts of Dante's poetry, and uh, we're just very, very proud of them. So the three students who are receiving the Dante Prize this evening are Molly Eisner. <laughs> Brooke Rubel. <laughs> there was a main moment because there was a squashed mosquito on her, her certificate, which is just very strange. <laughs> And finally, Catherine McKee, class of 22. <laughs> All right, the second of the two uh, Italian Studies prizes is the Raimondi Prize in Italian Studies. And this prize was established in 2016 by the generous um, donation of Zachary Amitzi also, class of 90, and it honors the most outstanding student in Italian studies to include language and uh, culture. And this prize goes to uh, Sabrina Lin. Congratulations, Woo! Sabrina. <laughs> so uh, thank you all very much. One more to go. <laughs> and I'm here on behalf of Hispanic Studies um, to deliver the Bra Philip Bradley Hispanic Studies Prize, which is going this year um, to Marcus Halbel and Maria, Pe Maria Perez Mendoza. Um, established in 1982 by classmates and friends in memory of Philip Bradley of the class of 1966, this prize is awarded to outstanding students in Spanish language and literature. And it is my pleasure to grant this honor to Maria and Marcus. 
um, I had the pleasure to see Maria growing during her uh, extensive coursework in Hispanic studies. And yes, it's the same Maria who got two prizes in physics. And while she was writing her thesis on gravitational forces, she was writing a phenomenal um, paper with analysis in, in Hispanic literature. And even like making me so jealous with her uh, video recording of her family history ending in her new um, endeavor, which is learning how to surf. So that's Maria for you. And then um, throughout his courses in our program, Marcus combined his meticulous close reading of literary tests with thoughtful questions about the historical context in which those tests were produced. And um, social skills are featured at their best in his meticulous and creative honors thesis on the origins of antisemitism in Argentina. Marcus demonstrated how antisemitism became a tool for the far right to perpetuate itself in power particularly during the invasion of the Malvinas Islands in 1982. Congratulations, Marcus. And finally, the sophomore prize in Hispanic studies is awarded each year to the most promising sophomore who have declared a major in Spanish. And this year, we're awarding David Alan Calzadillas in absentia for his contagious enthusiasm for literary analysis in Spanish, and Isabella Miller for her devotion to research in the Hispanic world. And Easy um, will be assisting Professor Margaret Boyle, Margaret Boyle this summer with transcriptions of Mexican Jewish food recipes. And we look forward to see da David and Easy's achievements in the future. Meaning out. Reed Johnson, uh, on behalf of the Russian department. Uh, it's my honor to uh, present two awards tonight to the three uh, wonderful students on stage. Um, the first is the Prize for Excellence in Russian Language and Literature. Uh, this prize, established in 2002 by Jane Knox, professor of Russian emerita, is awarded to a graduating senior who has achieved highest distinction as a Russian major. And we had a very difficult time with this, so we're awarding it to two students. Uh, uh, we're awarding it this year to uh, Kate Davidson and Evan Merrow. And uh, Evan, I've really come to appreciate your very thoughtful, careful way of speaking. And um, this ability has allowed you to hone your Russian to a remarkable extent this year. And we'll miss your thoughtfulness and care uh, as you go out into the world. Uh, Kate brings an abiding interest in interdisciplinary study, and she looks at Russia through this very wide-ranging lens, uh, political, economic, historical, um, and literary. And uh, th this will serve her well at Stanford this fall, where she'll, consider, uh, where she'll continue as a graduate student. And we'll miss your wry sense of humor and uh, your insights in our classes at Bowdoin. Um, And uh, we have another award, the Russian Scholar Laureate Award. Uh, this award is given by the American Council of Teachers of Russian, recognizing the best qualities of post-secondary Russian student and failing love of all things Russian, a passion for the language, literature, and culture, and a commitment to excellence and enthusiasm for knowledge and cultural liter literacy. And uh, this is sort of custom made uh, for Justin Winchell. Uh, his passion for Russian stretches back further than anyone else's. Uh, it's a high school, in fact, when he first visited the country. And since then, he's been a fantastic student, an advocate, a teacher, uh, teaching in local schools, and also being a teaching assistant here. And we'll miss your eagerness, your curiosity, and your enthusiasm as you go out into the world. Shalai vam dalnesho kuspiecho.
Hi, I'm Ingrid Nelson. I'm here on behalf of the sociology department this evening. Um, we're almost to the end of the alphabet. It's exciting. Um, first award tonight is the award for distinguished public sociology. Um, this is a, an award that we give out each year to a sociology major recognizing uh, public sociology work uh, in intellectual engagement outside of the classroom. This year it goes to Biz Sweeney for her engagement in communities both close to Bowdoin and across the country. Uh, congratulations, Biz. Our second award is the Elbridge Sibley Prize. Um, this goes to Gabby Unipan this year, a senior sociology major um, in recognition of her excellence inside the classroom. And Gabby will be defending her honors thesis in sociology next week. So congratulations, Gabby. Our next award is the Matilda White Riley Student Paper Award, given in recognition of excellent student paper in upper level sociology courses. And this year, the award goes to Conrad Lee for a paper from Sociology of Education course, and Elise Hawking for a paper in Sociology of Asians and the Media. And our last award is the Dorothy Haythorne Collins Award, which is given by a different department each year um, in honor of Dorothy Haythorne Collins um, by the Society of Bowdoin Women. And this year it was sociology's honor to present this award to a junior who has dem demonstrated academic and general excellence. And the sociology department has awarded this to Nicole Nigro. Um, congratulations, Nicole. Thank you for staying, everyone, despite the lightness of the hour and the weather, reflective of the intrepid spirit that got us through and getting us through. Um, I will keep everything brief because we're at the end. But let me just say in the spirit of our Karofsky speakers this evening, your voices have enriched our department. And it will not be the same place without you for those of you graduating. Thank you. Um, the Bowdoin Dance Group Award is awarded to Alex Rubenstein. You'll notice a lot of these awardees have also received other awards this evening, these remarkable students. Um, the Dance Group Award is awarded annually to an outstanding senior for contributions of dedicated work, goodwill, and talent to in the field of dance. So thank you. But where's Alex? Oh. I'm meeting Alex for the first time because we're in two buildings. So Alex, it's so good to meet you and to present you with this. <laughs> Award for Excellence in Dance Performance is awarded to Brooke Rubel awarded to the dance student in any class whose performing skills and commitment to excellence warrant special recognition. So here is your special. Thank you. An award for the outstanding contribution to theater and dance to Wayne Harding through this award is for consistent, generous, and varied activities, enriching the department's culture, raising the quality of our productions, and lifting the spirits of students, staff, and faculty. Uh, I am now presenting Andrew Mulholland with two awards. 
which is why he has this giant gift. <laughs> I can't wait to see your face when you unwrap it. <laughs> Um, Andrew is receiving the William H. Moody Award and the Abraham Goldberg Prize. The Moody Award is for excellence and technical contribution to the theater, and the Abraham Goldberg Prize is for excellence in design. Congratulations. <laughs> this one is close to my heart. Um, the Alice Merrill Mitchell Prize is awarded to <laughs> the student um, who, in the opinion of the faculty, has shown in plays presented at the college during the years preceding the date of the award the most skill in the art of acting. We are presenting that to two extraordinary students this evening, uh, Jessica Spate in Absentia and Hope Keeley, who's right here. And we have two final awards for juniors. The Raymond, the Raymond Rutan Scholarship for Summer Study in Theater is being presented to Alice Hawkins, who will be studying at the Stella Adler Conservatory of Acting in New York this summer, accepted at a very prestigious program. Um, I run, here we go. <laughs> And also in absentia, we, uh, the summer scholarship for study in dance, Lou Seidel, they will be studying uh, with the city company in a remote program, also very uh, exciting. And um, the word escapes me, but it's great. And she's gonna change the world when she comes back. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> I only have 20 or 30 minutes of remarks to make, so. <laughs> Let me first say, I don't know what kind of mosquitoes live on artificial surfaces, but we should be really, really worried about this. Uh, I just wanna say a couple of things very quickly. The first is uh, to Theo and Miriam, thank you for those remarkable words, the idea of place and a voice, place and voice, uh, which will stay with me and I know with the rest of us. Cheryl. Congratulations and thank you for everything that you have done for our students and for our community. To my faculty colleagues who uh, so showed heart and generosity uh, to our students tonight, I, I, there was so much joy in sitting there and watching you engage, even with the students you were meeting, and maybe particularly with the students that you're meeting for the first time. But, uh, but I'm not sure I've been filled with as much joy in, in a really long time. So thank you and thank you for everything that you're doing for our students. And to our students, to listen to our faculty describe your amazing accomplishments in what is an historically difficult year, I cannot congratulate you enough. It is so wonderful to have you as a part of Bowdoin. Congratulations. Good luck in the last sprint here to the end, and I'll see you, many of you on the steps of the Walker Art Museum uh, in just uh, about 15 days. Go home. <laughs>